So here we are, 21st of May. So I thought I'd give you a quick squidge round, show you where the plot's growing. So if we start up here um, by the shed, I've put my hanging baskets out. I will say last year was the first time I'd ever done a hanging basket. So I really don't know what I'm doing, but you've got to go for it, yeah. Um, so there I've got aqua leader in it and a couple of petunias in that one. And that one, I've got some aqua leader and oh, and a French marigold. Here is my sweet pea bit. The as you can see, all the I've cut all the um, bluebells off, and I've taken the tulip bulbs out, the ones I could find, and I've put some sweet peas in. Now the sweet peas I brought on through through the winter. They're not doing quite so well here, but um, the others you'll see in a minute are doing okay. I remember my signs that my mate made for me, look. Okay, so onwards where we go. Here, and then as I say, that hanging basket, it's got them pansies in, it just keeps going. So I'm going to leave it keeping going. In my pots, I've taken the bulbs out, I've added some more compost and I've put various bits and pieces in hopefully to make all that look pretty then I've got loads of pumpkin plants <laughs> I'm still doing the plants to sell for the scouts to get as many sailing as possible in my cold frame here I've got some melons um, I'm really tongue-in-cheek here they're seeds from a cantaloupe melon that we bought from the supermarket I dried them off and sowed them and they've all come up and so now I've just put them out and we'll see what happens. Then let's go into our, um, our little tea room. The outside tea room's not in not in uh, in use just yet, it's a junkyard but well, I'm getting sorted slowly. Then once again that hanging basket is a continuation of last year as that one is and they just keep going so I'm leaving them to keep going so into our little tea roomy bit um, I've got some gherkins there they you might think that they look a bit close together um, but there's a, a youngster done a YouTube and he grows them like that I think he's American um, and and he clips them off so I'm going to fan them out on that on the um, on that wire and then I've got a beefsteak tomato round the side here. Doesn't get sun in here, it just gets nice and warm. And I think that's just a bait all, but we'll just swizz round. Uh, there's my guard. I swizz round, there we go, I've got some absolutely good, the geraniums, they've soldiered on right through the winter they have. But of course in here it gets, it get, gets quite nice and warm. Um, and I've got a couple of oak trees there too. Um, I've gone past me, but... Um, let's switch back then I've got a couple of oak trees they were acorns that come in the compost and they've they've come up and probably what I'll do is I'll just sneak them out and plant, plant them in somewhere in the oak that they're growing that'd be my contribution to uh, keeping the world green um, and I've got a nice petunia there that's soldiered right through the winter okay so let's squidge along let's go to there's my outsidey bit that uh, hopefully will look uh, pretty and there's various bits and pieces there that um, have come through the winter um, though I've made this um, little tray up that's just to make the place look a little bit more attractive and those petunias there they've soldiered right through the winter as well right in the greenies we've got uh, I've, the peppers uh, I'm gradually potting them on and putting them where they're gonna live uh, there's nothing remarkable in here really <laughs> except for I've now put peppers into the grow bags there we are I've got two peppers in there they're California Wonder they were excellent last year and I'm going to remember the pits to take the top seat um, then I've got gherkins growing here I love gherkins and I only made two jars last year so now I've got three gherkin plants there that I'm going to train up and hopefully make lots more then round here see that pepper 
that we brought through the winter. I had about a dozen peppers here, if you remember. I tried to bring a, about six of them through. That's the only one that survived. There's one there that's still green, but I don't think it's going to come to anything. So anyway, I'm going to go for that and see what the results of that are. Then I've got two tomato plants there. They are, um, I can't remember any. I've written it there somewhere. I've got a feeling they are a money maker and an Elsa Craig. I always grow the two together and they do cross pollinate. You get the flavour of the Elsa Craig and the um, shape of the money maker. Great vines. Um, somebody asked me, did the grafts work? Um, in, a, in a word, no. They didn't, the grafts didn't die. They're still there. They're just not taking, they're just not, they're not leafing. But if you touch them, they still feel as so they're, they're green. So I'm going to leave it for a bit longer yet, but I'm at, but I feel like it's a failure on my part, um, and I will um, try and do it again. I might even still try and do another one even even now. Then my raised beds, um, I've got dwarf beans in. I've got all sorts of stuff in. Like these turnips were only put in last week, not growing already. We've had some rain, we've had some heat, and it's it's just doing a treat. Leeks are all looking really good. Over the far side there, the um, red onions are doing good. I've scattered um, uh, radish seed in amongst them, and they're doing well as well. And then the parsnips, various various sowings of parsnip, they were all grown in tubes. And as you can see, you can just see the bottom of a tube, uh, sorry, the top of a tube there, look. Um, you can see that they're doing well. That is the way to do it. Bring them on in tubes in the greenhouse and then you can put them out. In fact, I might even make a little video of that next time. Right, okay, let's slip back to the path, shall we? So, on our way back, there we go. I've just done a picking of peas and a picking of beans. And we'll see them in a minute. They're So that when you come onto the plot, you're welcomed by um, some nice leaf flowers. Um, I can't remember what I put in here now. <laughs> I'm not a flower person, but I'm getting there. Um, but the sweet peas, look at those. Those sweet peas I sowed up way back last November in the green ace, and I've carried them through. And look at them, they are looking tremendous. As is this little, little contraption I've made here with some willow sticks. I'm looking forward to them. Right then, on we go. Oh, we've got some poppies there. They were um, a packet of poppy seeds. They should be mixed. Strawberry bed. Oh, I know that they're first year strawberries, but you just got to go for it. If there's one there to eat, then you'll have one, won't you? And look at that. That is, that is big. <laughs> and there's another one there in front of it. So there we go, in front of it. So we're, that is going home today. Right, onwards we go then, very, very gently, so as not to make you wobbly. Beach fruit. Now these beetroot are sowed really early, and as you can see, oops Daisy, mind the wire, as you can see we've got one there, I'm going to take a couple of beetroot home. I don't believe I've had them this early before, and that's, it is down to the weather I'm convinced. And then I've got various sowings through there, and then of course up there is the... Um, there's the leeks that we just saw from the other side. And then along here, these are, this is me, um, the white onions. And then, oops, let's go to the carrot bed. Now I've got this carrot, this mesh around in the hope to defeat the carrot fly. It is a raised bed as well, so all in all, we should be okay. And then if we look very carefully, the carrots are up, look. And that is uh, Fellery and Early Nance. I'm pleased with that. And then I shall do various sowings progressing across the plot. Okay, so now let's go to the grapevines. Now you remember I painted these with lime. Uh, and, um, and give them a severe pruning. This one... Um, it's, it's this one's a good advert for either Goya or 
cordon and you can see that the grapes are, are producing already on the Goya uh, but there's nothing nothing on the on the um, cordon there's no grapes so that's telling me Goya it is which isn't quite so easy as the cordon method but then if we move along to the next one this one this one is this one looks to me like the coi the go oh, get it right the cordon method is working even though there we go see those grapes are on the cordon and then the gordon the <laughs> The Goya down the bottom here, there aren't grapes. Oh, yes, there is. Yes, there is. Tell a lie. But they're smaller. So that one I might cordon. This one I think I only cordoned. And this one is the Saval. Um, and it looks to me like that one, it doesn't matter. So I'll probably cordon that one as well. Right, then I've got in there a couple of marrow plants. Because I've redid all of these beds. There's one there, look. And he's very happy. I can just see some flowers producing and one there and then that is the Cape Gooseberry I brought through the winter in the green ace and then we have the other grapevine there that's cordoned and that's working too then in our bath let me take that off the fox actually went in there and I think he went in there for a sleep there we go we've got three three melons in there and they are the small tennis ball type, type sized ones with proper bought, bought seed. Then our asparagus is next door. It's been tremendous. This asparagus this year has been absolutely superb. I'm looking forward to the strawberries on that uh, strawberry bin too. Then that strawberry bin is I think three years old so that's probably getting on a bit. But as you can see I've noticed I'm getting some weeds um, and I think that some of the weeds are the nasty things that really got to get out, I've got to sort out. And there's my new grapevines, my two new grapevines, which I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do those yet. Then, let's go along to uh, our garlics. There's the elephant garlic. As you can see, they're looking, they're looking tremendous, but a couple of them have already gone to seed, and I didn't want that at all. And there's only half a dozen plants there, so if you've only got half a dozen, three of them gone, so you don't leave much. And that's the Ola white garlic, and that's got rust. But they're just beginning to die back, so they're probably okay anyway. And then the broad beans, which is next to them, absolutely tremendous. As you can see, I've already picked some broad beans. And those leeks have gone to seed as well. Back on the path, named me shallots. Um, they seem to be doing alright, a couple of them have had seed heads but I've just nipped them out. Hello Mr Sparrow, I hope you're eating all the black fly for me. Yeah, you're very tame. Um, my overwintered onions, they are looking tremendous. I've got some um, oloroso lettuce there which is also looking good. Yeah, and as I was saying earlier, the parsnips, these were um, grown in tubes and I need to thin them because there's some doubles um, but they give you something to to eat I mean they're big enough when I pull the the chosen one eight it's big enough it's only the size of a carrot but very nice the broad beans are just beginning to get a bit of black fly on the tops of these later ones the ones I brought through the winter here they're fine so but these are just getting black fly so I've taken the tops out um, it encourages the beans to fatten anyway um, and you wouldn't you wouldn't want beans right on the very top of the plants anyway even though some of those I've got there the beans are all the way up but um, but nevertheless they're going to fatten up all right just wouldn't need a bit of rain which I've got to believe I believe it's coming tomorrow so let's ping back to the path again shall we We'll just show you them peas again because I'm so chuffed with them peas. Back to the path. Right, here we go again. Now I've just put in um, a red cabbage there. I've got another red cabbage, a sprout and a couple of all year round cauliflowers right over there, over the back. Um, and I will do be progressively putting in cauliflowers 
right the way through, right up till September. Just every so often, I've put one in like every month or something like that. Then coming along to the next bit, I'm going with my sunflowers like I always do, and I've got various plants in there because I want to attract the bees. Then the pumpkins, I've got four pumpkin plants. They came from saved seed from last year's pumpkins. And the same with my squash, which is over there. The, they're saved seed, and so is the sweet corn. So I'm really taking a chance on safe, safe seed. It's, um, but in previous years I've saved seed from pumpkin. In fact, these pumpkin plants now, the actual mother, if you want, <laughs> of those has got to be eight, nine years old. And it was a couple of seeds I picked up in France. I'm on the floor in a market. I'm mean, aren't I? <laughs> so there we go, that's that and then Potato, oh, sunflowers, they're coming, coming on good luck, as you can see. Then we're along to potatoes. I've now dug out half the compost heap and I've earthed my potatoes up with compost. It's not as well rotted as I would have liked, but it's rotted enough. The potatoes won't complain. In fact, they don't look like they're complaining, do they? So they're all looking good. Then my carrot bed here has got carrots in, as it would do if it's a carrot bed, and my parsnips. Once again, I've got a double parsnip there, so I need to snip one of them out. I'm, I'm hoping to get a really super long parsnip for the show. Then pond, he's looking good. In fact, this morning, oddly enough, I could hear a little froggy going, rid it, rid it. So I suppose if he was in a, a library, that's what he'd be saying, rid it, rid it. Oh, let's not be silly, eh? Then these grapevines, that one I severely pruned down to the cordon method and that has responded tremendously. Has had that one there. And we'll go over the other side in a minute and we'll have a quick, and we'll have a squidge at the fruit side. Then we all know what we got in here. Then they're behaving. They're super busy, these then bees. Oh, this one there just told me to buzz off. See what I did there? Right, <laughs> then round to the potatoes that I'll put in the bins. Now some of these potatoes were grown before Christmas. I'll put them in bins and I'll put, I'll put that bit of glass over the top, look. And one of those I emptied out and I've got a picture of them. I emptied them out four, probably three or four weeks ago and I'm going to slip a picture in now. Think. Right, here we are on the other side. Um, a couple more potatoes in buckets. They're the ones that, that, that are south sun and they're growing, I'll dig them up. Um, I've, I'm trying this cage, if you like, with tomatoes in, in the hope that we can get the tomatoes to grow without getting blight. So once again, I've got Elsa Craig, Money Maker, and a Cordy Burr uh, growing in here. So that's one we, a little try, if you like. Then, it's me rose. You've got to have a rose tree at the end of grapevines. My blueberries, I think the soil has gone too neutral and that it's not happy at all. It's just a bit struggling along there. I've tried to add it up the soil and they're exactly the same with this one here. There's another view of me asparagus. Some of those, look at them there. Sick as your thumb. And then these are my, what's his name, grapes, me dessert grapes. Um, and as you can see, I've cordoned them and they've responded quite well. The, the stems are actually quite long, so, and I'm gonna sort out these, probably take that out and take the top off. Um, but we'll see, we'll see. I'm no expert with grapes, but I'm getting there. YouTube's wonderful. Right, then, my fig tree. It's got a couple of figs on it. And then, this is my fruit side. Um, so, for the minute, I've forgotten what I've got. Here, that's a raspberry. Gooseberries, now look at those. Those gooseberries, it isn't going to be long before they're going to be ready. Then this is my autumn raspberries. Then I've got red currants or black currants. I can't remember which way round. They're looking really good, as you can see. They're top right up. I think my beehive 
has actually done me and the rest of Lotman Holes a tremendous favour. Look at this pear tree. I don't think I've ever seen so many pears on this pear tree and I'm not sure whether I should be taking them out or what, but we'll find out. Then the peach tree the same. Four peaches last year, 40 this year. But we've got blight, not blight, we've got that red thing that makes the leaves, leaves go all curly. Um, and once again, a YouTube fellow, an American, um, he suggested you've got to keep the water off it. So I've built a tent with polythene and I've taken all the leaves away that have got the infection. Um, ah, there's one there with just a little tiny bit left. That really isn't a good example of it, but that is that is what's happened. That's what I've got. Um, and then that will go in the dustbin. Up here to the apple tree, and that is exactly the same. Look at that, totally loaded up. I've been around all of those and taken two or three apples out of each bunch. And I'm not sure whether I should be doing any more yet. But anyway, there it is. There's the plot. Let's squizzle around. Give it to you all the way down. The birds love the scarecrow, they settle on its arm. There we go, there's the plot. It's all looking really good. And the sparrows are visiting quite a lot. I'm not quite sure what they're visiting for, but I'm hoping they're eating black fly. There he is. So, I'll see you probably in the summer then, eh? Happy gardening. No, happy growing. Bye.